Carefully remove loose debris that has fallen into the impression afterwards, for instance leaves or branches. Leave the debris in the impression when there's a chance of damaging the impression. When the impression is slightly too dry, you can dampen it with an atomizer. Start dampening outside the impression. That way, you'll prevent the impression being damaged if the nozzle hasn't been adjusted correctly. Keep sufficient distance between the atomizer and the impression to avoid damage. By dampening, you'll improve the quality of the impression. Never dampen a dry impression. Skip this step in those instances. Stop the dampening outside the impression to avoid big drops of water falling into the impression. Fix the impressions by spraying with a fixing material. Start spraying outside the impression to check whether the aerosol with fixing material is functioning. The fixing material will bind the grains of sand and the impression will be strengthened. Spray the impression from different angles to ensure the fixing material reaches all corners. Stop spraying outside the impression. The fixing material will need to harden for some time. Spray the impression with non-stick agent. Start spraying outside the impression to check if the aerosol is functioning. The non-stick agent prevents the subsoil sticking to the plaster. Spray the impression from a different angle as well to ensure the non-stick agent reaches all corners. Stop spraying outside the impression to prevent big drops falling into the impression. Mix the amount of plaster needed for the impression with the subscribed amount of water. In the example, the plastic bag was chosen. Put the water in the bag first, then add the plaster. Allow the air to escape from the bag as much as possible and close the bag. An advantage of the method is that you can feel whether there are lumps in the mixture. Mixing in a plaster bowl or other container is also possible. In all cases, you must add the plaster to the water to get a good consistency. Spread a thin layer of dry plaster, which is at least half a millimeter thick, into the impression using a fine sieve. Make sure the impression is totally and equally covered with a thin layer of plaster. Dampen the thin layer of dry plaster with water from an atomizer. By dampening the layer, a plaster mixture will form that can harden. This way, the quality of the impression will be optimal. Continue doing this until small cracks appear. This effect is called the crackling effect. If it occurs, the plaster is moist enough. Be sure to cover this crackling layer within two minutes with the plaster mixture. Otherwise, the crackling effect will remain visible in the impression. Put the plaster mixture in the impression very carefully, starting at the lowest point. This way, you will prevent the plaster damaging the impression. A good method is to cover the edges of the impression first, so you'll know where the borders of the impression are. To prevent the mixture flowing out of the impression, a layer of plaster is put into the sole and the heel separately 
place a border of about one centimeter around the impression. By doing this, the edge of the impression will be clearly visible in the cast. Make sure the cast has the right thickness, about one centimeter, to prevent it from easily breaking. Make sure the top part is as flat as possible, so it can be easily marked. This way, you will also prevent an uneven surface and the cast will be flat for photography or scanning. Mark the cast before it's hardened with at least your identifying mark as well as the date. If these numbers are recorded in the cast, no confusion can exist about its origin. An arrow in the cast will indicate the north, showing orientation of the impression. Make sure the cast is hardened enough. You can hear it by knocking on the cast. Carefully remove it from the subsoil. Let the cast dry naturally for 24 hours before cleaning. Do not accelerate the drying period, for instance by heating the cast. Clean the cast with running water. To avoid scratches in the cast, remove stubborn dirt by hand or by using a soft brush. Carefully remove loose debris that has fallen into the impression afterwards, for instance leaves or branches. Leave the debris in the impression when there's a chance of damaging the impression. Put the plaster mixture in the impression very carefully, starting at the lowest point. This way, you will prevent the plaster damaging the impression. A good method is to cover the edges of the impression first, so you'll know where the borders of the impression are. To prevent the mixture flowing out of the impression, a layer of plaster is put into the sole and the heel separately. Place a border of about one centimeter around the impression. By doing this, the edge of the impression will be clearly visible in the cast. Make sure the cast has the right thickness, about one centimeter, to prevent it from easily breaking. Make sure the top part is as flat as possible, so it can be easily marked. This way, you will also prevent an uneven surface and the cast will be flat for photography or scanning. Mark the cast before it's hardened with at least your identifying mark as well as the date. If these numbers are recorded in the cast, no confusion can exist about its origin. An arrow in the cast will indicate the north, showing orientation of the impression. Make sure the cast is hardened enough. You can hear it by knocking on the cast. Carefully remove it from the subsoil. Let the cast dry naturally for 24 hours before cleaning. Do not accelerate the drying period, for instance by heating the cast. Clean the cast with running water. To avoid scratches in the cast, remove stubborn dirt by hand or by using a soft brush. For impressions in frozen powder snow, the best result is obtained by using the dry method. Do not use fixing or non-stick agent.
spread a thin layer of dry plaster, which is at least half a millimeter thick, into the impression using a fine sieve. Make sure the impression is totally and equally covered with a thin layer of plaster. Dampen the thin layer of dry plaster with water from an atomizer. By dampening the layer, a plaster mixture will form that can harden. This way, the quality of the impression will be optimal. Continue doing this until small cracks appear. This effect is called the crackling effect. If it occurs, the plaster is moist enough. Be sure to cover this crackling layer within two minutes with the plaster mixture. Otherwise, the crackling effect will remain visible in the impression. The water for the plaster mixing must be as cold as possible. Using melted snow is a good idea. Water that's too warm could damage the impression. The plaster mix must be allowed to thicken somewhat before putting it into the impression. Put the plaster mixture in the impression very carefully, starting at the lowest point. This way, you will prevent the plaster damaging the impression. A good method is to cover the edges of the impression first so you'll know where the borders of the impression are. Place a border of about one centimeter around the impression. By doing this, the edge of the impression will be clearly visible in the cast. Make sure the cast has the right thickness, about one centimeter, to prevent it from easily breaking. Mark the cast before it's hardened with at least your identifying mark as well as the date. If these numbers are recorded in the cast, no confusion can exist about its origin. An arrow in the cast will indicate the north showing orientation of the impression. For impressions in fresh, moist snow, the best result is obtained by using the wet method. Never use a fixing or non-stick agent. The plaster mix must be allowed to thicken somewhat before putting it into the impression. Put the plaster mixture in the impression very carefully, starting at the lowest point. This way, you will prevent the plaster damaging the impression. A good method is to cover the edges of the impression first so you'll know where the borders of the impression are. Make sure the cast has the right thickness, about one centimeter, to prevent it from easily breaking. Make sure the top part is as flat as possible so it can be easily marked. This way, you will also prevent an uneven surface and the cast will be flat for photography or scanning. Mark the cast before it's hardened with at least your identifying mark as well as the date. If these numbers are recorded in the cast, no confusion can exist about its origin. An arrow in the cast will indicate the north showing orientation of the impression. In this example, the impression is found to be in stagnant water. In flowing water, the current of the water above the impression has to be decreased. This can be done, for instance, by building a dam or by placing a synthetic tube around the impression. Once plaster has started to be placed in the water, you will not be able to see the impression anymore. That's why the location of the impression should be marked off first. Sprinkle the dry plaster in the water above the impression. Make sure the plaster is well mixed with the water and no lumps occur. Using a sieve is a good idea. After sieving a layer of plaster, the rest of the plaster can be put in by using a spoon. Make sure the layer of plaster is at least one centimeter thick to prevent the cast breaking when removing it. Before removing the cast, make sure it has hardened underwater for at least two hours. To prevent the cast breaking into parts, it's best to remove it together with the subsoil. To do that, you can, for instance, use a shovel.
Do not forget to mark the cast for identification purposes.